I was really excited to look into writing a history of the Mary Tyler Moore Show. When I was interviewing a lot of current female comedians, mostly Tina Fey and Julia Louis-Dreyfus, they all cite the Mary Tyler Moore Show as their inspiration. And I thought, you know, what was going on here that so many women now really looked up to this particular sitcom? And once I looked into it, I also found out that it was one of the first shows to hire many women behind the scenes to write for it, as opposed to just the token one or two. And that seemed to make all the difference, I think. And women of the time really responded to it and related to it and still look to it today for inspiration. Am I a Mary or a Rhoda is something that often comes up in the course of discussing the Mary Tyler Moore Show. I think we all identified more with one than the other. And I would say that I grew up as a Mary, I was a very good girl, but I really aspired to be Rhoda, and I'm happy to say that I think I grew up to be more of a Rhoda, a little more outspoken. She had great fashion sense, she was really artsy, she was very cool, and I always, always wanted to be her, and I used to wear headscarves when I was about five years old, uh, hoping to someday be as cool as she was. I believe that Mary Richards would not necessarily have called herself a feminist at the time that she was on the show, but I think that she learned a lot of lessons through what we saw on the show that probably would have led her to eventually identify as a feminist, and I like to believe that she would be out there somewhere right now, kind of rabble-rousing even in her latter years. I think a lot of television shows in the last, I'd say 10 or even 20 years, really, really hark back to the Mary Tyler Moore Show. And we've seen an explosion of them now in recent years, specifically the shows about single women kind of making it on their own in the city. And everything from 30 Rock to now the Mindy Project, I think really reflects that.